How many of you just joined us for tonight? Can I get you to wave your hand? day so far. I'm sorry you just got here now, but we had uh, a lot of real deep, intimate times with the Lord today, and this morning we had some fun ministry. The uh, Father was giving out gold teeth, and we had... Um, a number of different people. Two ladies that I know of had four teeth. And if you remember the very first lady that came up that was on the platform that we showed you her teeth, um, she got two or three more. So that was, we've had a lot of fun. Tonight the plan is to have, uh, at, when we have our ministry time at the end, is to have fire tunnels. And so those of you that are underneath the flags, can I get you to wave to me underneath the flag, folks? Now most of you aren't listening. People underneath the flags wave. Okay. As soon as we start ministry, we're going to need you folks to stack those chairs, not lie them against the, or lean them against the wall, but lay them flat up high like that in about 50 high right against the wall, because that's going to be where one of the fire tunnels is going to be. So as soon as we start ministry, if you can go real quick and just stack all those, stack like that, that'd be very good. And we're probably going to have one tunnel up at the front, one over at the side and two at the back. And the idea is that you just sort of make a rotation and just keep going through the different tunnels. But we'll explain that to you a little bit more. Now, at the end of the meeting, if there are about 20 people that could help us, we just need to quickly have a run through the, the auditorium and clean the building for tomorrow morning. And so would there be about 20 people that would be willing to do that? Here's, before you put your hand up, let me tell you the benefits. You get a nice, hot, cooked breakfast tomorrow morning, bacon and eggs, all that kind of stuff. And um, so that's your, you'll get a little pass just to give you a free breakfast tomorrow morning. You can come anytime you want tomorrow. So are there some guys who would like to do that? Guys, gals? Okay, now those of you with your hands up, here's what I need you to do right now. There's a gentleman named Dave on the stairs waving his hands. You need to go and see him right now and get your instructions. So if you'd like to help tomorrow morning, go see D Dave. Dave, keep waving your hand until you get 20 people. And uh, that would be great. All righty. Can I get you to stand up? We're going to have a fun time tonight. Usually Saturday night is sort of a blowout and, you know, get really full of the Holy Spirit and have a fun time. And we're also going to go deep tonight. I hope you don't mind going deep again. And we have as our worship leader tonight Kelly Warren. And Kelly is sitting down at the back. <laughs> Kelly is originally from Florida and came to our school of ministry and stayed and she's been part of the worship team, one of the worship leaders that ministers here on a regular basis. And everyone in her band is a TACFer and most of them have been to our school of ministry, all except for Nicole and Jason. And Nicole right over here in the black and white, Nicole was in the worship team the first Sunday that TACF started. She was like seven or eight. How old were you then? <laughs> 13? 10? Sorry? 16. Okay, she was 16. But she's, she, is, she and her mother um, and one other lady are the longest standing members of TACF. So she was here right at the very beginning back when our church started as a, cell group, as a uh, house group in uh, John Arnott's mother's basement, not too far away from over here. All righty, we ready to worship? Yeah. Grab someone's hand, grab someone's hand. Tall person, close your eyes. Shorter person, put your hand on their shoulder, minister to them, say, fill them up. Give them more of the Holy Spirit. Fill them up. Okay, reverse, switch over, switch over. Tall person, you do the ministry now. Switch. You guys ready to dance? some fun. <laughs> Just put your hand on your heart. Say, Father, make me a passionate worshiper. 
Amen. Let's worship. Oh, 
just building up inside of each one of us and it's feel like it's this passion that's just it's dying to get out it's trying to get out just open your mouth and let it out just let it out
trembles at his voice and trembles at his
Yes, Father. Yes, Father. You know, as we were singing that song, that's why I was saying, sing it to the nations, because I kept seeing this map. And I was thinking, we're singing, uh, how great is our God, all will see. And as we were saying that, all will see, that was, that's declaring it into the heavenlies. All will see that our God is great. I just kept seeing this map, and as we were singing it, it was like um, just sprouting out over to other countries and over to other cities. And so I just felt like that was a prophetic act of just singing it out into the heavenlies. You know, he hears that, and we have the ability to speak things into being through his name. Yeah, that was amazing. Father, Father, you are absolutely amazing. You are absolutely amazing, Father. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, just come and rest. Just come and rest in this place, Father. Father, send your Holy Spirit just to rest on us.
Spear! 
Father, stir up a passion within us. Just lay your hands on your belly. Father, stir up a passion within us. Father, stir it up. It's my heart to be as passionate as I can possibly be. Stir it up, Father, stir it up. Stirring up in our hearts a passion for your name. Stirring up in our hearts, Lord. Stirring up in our hearts, Lord. Stirring up in our hearts a passion for your name. Stirring up in our hearts, Lord. Stirring up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, a passion for your name. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, a passion for your name. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts. Passion for your name. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts. A passion for your name. What I feel, what he's doing right now, and you just need to reach out and grab it, but. You know, for, for us right now, it's the fall and it's harvest. And it's a harvest time right now. And I had a picture of a big apple tree. And the apples are ripe and they're ready to be picked. And I feel like when you leave from this place, that you need to have great expectation of what the Lord is going to do in your life and the people at home. And it's time for you now. You've been watching that tree and you've been saying, is it ready? Is it time? Is it time to pick the apples? And the apples are ready to be picked. The fruit of his goodness, of what God has been doing, what you've been watching, he's ready. So how about you just grab it now and say, Lord, and just start picking all the fruit that, you, that you've been asking, Father. Whoa. Whoa, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the goodness of the Lord. We thank you for the feast that you've given us this week, Lord. And we just say more, and we go home with great expectation and wonder of who you are. Thank you, Father. Whoa. Thank you, Father. Whoa. Whoa, Lord, thank you. Start calling in souls. Start calling in souls. You start praying for souls. The people in your family, start naming them. Bring start them calling in. in. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Father, that you have given us such an amazing taste of it today. We thank you, Father. And we just ask you, come Holy Spirit all over this room again. All over this room again, Holy Spirit. Will you fill us up again once more? 
so when we go home, we can give it away. Thank you, Father. We want to be filled up so much that it just, we have a glow. Oh, I think you should just grab someone's hand again. Father, we, we receive more and we give more. Receive more and give more. Oh, come Holy Spirit. Oh. Oh boy, oh boy. Shh. Okay, I think we're sort of still needing to go a little bit more. Ooh.
Just to be with you, my Lord. 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 I want 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 to be with you, my Lord. Woo! Jesus, you are the Savior of my soul. And forever and ever I'll give my praises to you. You are the Savior of my soul And forever and ever I'll give my praises to you Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Father. Isn't that good to declare him's name, Clara's name? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, how many of you are feeling a little warm? Uh, you know what? If <laughs> This building is nowhere as hot as it is for our youth conference. How many of you have been here for Fresh Wind? Like, not only is it hot, way hotter than this, but it smells. And we actually, the youth last year started selling sprays of deodorant, like it was 50 cents for a psh, psh. And uh, we did pretty good selling the deodorant, it was good. You know, that good ax stuff, kind of stuff, so. Anyways, you may take your seat. Well, not take it, go sit in it. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Let me, just, um, let me just talk about Kelly and her band for a minute. Yeah. The, um, the best-selling CD that we have ever produced at TACF, and there's been like 20-something 20, 20 CDs, is this one right here by Kelly. It's called Heaven's Whisper and it's a soaking CD. It's the biggest selling CD that we've ever done. And uh, Kelly has a number of CDs. She has um, one that's piano and, and flute. It's called Rest. And she has one, her and Nicole have done another soaking one. It's called You Are Beautiful. This one is very good as well. And she's just recorded two more CDs. There's a new one that's gonna be coming out in the end of November that is called not sure, it's another in instrumental, quiet one. It's like rest. And if you pre-order it tonight, you can get a discount on that, on that one. And then three weeks ago, she recorded a new live worship CD. It'll be very similar to the style of tonight. So if you like that kind of stuff, Kelly's your gal. I want to mention too that all of the sessions in here, the main sessions have been recorded on DVD and you can get them in a set like this or you can get them individually in one of the, the smaller things. And if you can believe it, every conference that we've had this year is on this CD right here. This is an MP3 format. Every single session, uh, teaching session from all of our conferences, so that's Pastors and Leaders, Fresh Wind, Show Me Your Glory, Healing Conference, Have Another Drink, Fresh Anointing, Catch the Fire, and Soaking God's Glory are all on this CD which is an MP3 format. Is that right? What did I say wrong, John? It's a DVD. It's just audio files on DVDs, okay. So that's, that's that. What else should I say? Um, brand new book that was written by an Englishman named John Peters. 
and it's the uh, mo most recent sort of story of what's been happening. The first sort of book about TACF was written in 1994 by Guy Chevreau, who was here last night, uh, called Catch the Fire, and there really hasn't been sort of anyone writing a little bit of a historical book, but this is it, and it's brand new. It's only like three weeks old, called The Story of Toronto Through the Lives of John and Carol Arnott, and a lot of interviews of people in our staff uh, that were interviewed for that book. And one more thing, John and Carol, this is their newest uh, CD, is some, two of the best talks that they gave. They gave these on two Sunday mornings uh, back in in the autumn, I think it was, uh, called Freedom Through God's, Through Grace and Forgiveness, and then Carol talked about breaking the power of judgments, and these are absolutely foundational issues uh, in everyone's life, is how do you walk in grace and mercy, how do you forgive people, how do you let go of the grievances, how do you let go of the hurt and the pain, how do you not take offense, and then sort of unraveling why do we take offense at other people so easily. Usually it's because we've pointed the finger at some point in our, in our past and now the finger's pointing back at us and so we're reaping those things. Oh, what was I going to say? Sorry? Okay, right. Um, we still need a few more people who'd be willing to help after the, the meeting tonight just with arranging the chairs and tidying things up. And uh, David is at the stairs. Is he at the stairs? I don't see. There, there's David just running to the stairs now. And there's like 10 more people. Dave's waving his hand back there. If you're going to be here tonight and you don't mind staying for like a half an hour afterwards and just helping us, you'll get a free breakfast tomorrow morning, a hot cooked breakfast, bacon and eggs, all that kind of stuff. And so if there's somebody you'd like to do that, go and see Dave right now and he'll give you information about that. Alrighty, can I get my Malawian brother? Come on up here, brother. I met this brother this afternoon. He is from the country that I grew up in. My first five years were in Malawi, Africa. And this is a bishop, and he uh, oversees over a thousand churches in Malawi. And how many of you know where Malawi is? How many have no idea where Malawi is? All right. Well, if you know where Mozambique is, go north of South Africa, go north of Zimbabwe, uh, just there's a sliver of a country, a long skinny country, and it uh, fits into Mozambique a little bit in terms of like a little bit of a glove holds it in place. And it used to be one of the most prosperous nations in Africa, and because of all the civil wars of countries around it, it has just been overwhelmed with refugees. It's one of the highest AIDS per person countries in the world now. And brother, there's good news though. What's God doing in your country? What's he doing? Yeah, quite a, uh, God, is doing God is doing quite a lot of uh, exciting things in our nation. Uh, I wasn't expecting this anyway, but <laughs> I'll give a short testimony of what God is doing in Malawi. Uh, it's quite amazing that uh, uh, God is moving and the there's a revival that is just uh, sweeping across the whole nation. And the, even the government is beginning to respect what God is doing in our nation. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Now, it used to be that there was a Muslim president, and he's no longer, it's no longer a Muslim president. Is that right? It's a, is it a Christian man now? Yeah, we now have a Christian, we now have a Christian president. Yeah. Yeah. Which is very good. Yeah. And what sort of... What sort of things is God doing? Like, why, is, why are so many people in Malawi turning to Jesus? Is it because of the desperation? Is it because of poverty? Is it because of AIDS? Why are they turning to Jesus? Uh, I would shortly put it like, uh, like you were saying in the afternoon that your mother uh, and your parents were missionaries in Africa, uh, in Malawi in particular, for about uh, 10 years or so. Yep. Actually, what God is doing right now is the fruit of uh, the mission work that the missionaries did. You know, some of the missionaries were in Africa, some of them, they died without seeing any fruit. Yep. But whatever God is doing right now is a result of the uh, fruit, uh, of, of the seed that was planted by the missionaries. And yep. the God, what you see right now is the fruit of what the missionaries did in Africa. And it's really exciting, isn't it, to yeah. just see people respond and put their hands up. My mother keeps showing me videos <laughs> of... Uh, you know, what's going on, and she'll phone me and say, if you have to watch uh, for the Canadians, there's a TV show called 100 Huntley Street, 
and she says, you got to watch tonight because they're going to have a 15-minute show on, on uh, Malawi. And so, you know, I, I, I see some of the little towns that my parents used to minister in, and, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, bless you, brother. Can we pray for you? Yeah, sure. Thank you. We need to uh, stretch our hands towards this, brother. Holy Spirit, would you come and just fill this brother? He's here because some English missionary friends of his have uh, felt that he needed to get a good soak, and so an English couple have paid his way to be here. And if you're, if you're overseeing a, a thousand churches, who... <laughs> you need to have a good soak from time to time, don't you? All right, now, when Ed was preaching today, how many of you heard a little bit of occasional disturbance from the back? Okay, now, hands down, the ladies that were involved in that little disturbance, can I get you to just put your hand up? Where are these ladies? Look around. Now, ladies, there was at least a hundred of you I heard. They were crammed into the washroom, checking each other's teeth and having their own meeting in the ladies' washrooms. There's, much, there's only like three of you put your hand up. There was much more than that, I heard. Anyways, we had, during the afternoon, many more uh, dental things were happening. And so, I don't even know who to call up. Let's say if you have four gold teeth or more, we'll start there. Where are those people? Four or more? Hands up. Where are the four? There was two ladies had four. There's one over there. Okay, come on up. Where's the other lady? Somewhere over here. Okay, come on up. How many did you have? Four or more? Gold teeth. I think there was two of them that I heard about. There's a lady in red today. Come on up. Anyone else? Anyone have three or more? <laughs> over here? Come on up. You were the first lady that came up. She got one at the beginning. Remember this lady over here? The lady who wouldn't run when we asked her to run? See if you can run this time. There she goes. All right. How many did you get? Did, how many, tell the people how many you think you got. Seven. <laughs> Let me take a look. You know what? Those look very platinum. Those are very interesting. That's very good. How long did you hold your mouth open today for your friends? Uh, many times. <laughs> Where are you from? From Holland. From Holland. Yeah. Okay. And... Now, come on over here, camera gal. This gal, remember she had one. Um, where's um, Faustin? Come running up here. I need a flashlight holder. Okay, you need to smile. You can get real close. She had one. And now, how many do you have? She has three now. Just wait. Okay, focus, focus, focus. Open wide, open wide. There's one over, over here, one over there. One up at the top. See that one up there? That's amazing. Okay, and this lady? She's got four. So, okay, camera gal, switch over here now. Switch over here. And these ones are all the top, so head back. Camera gal, get right up. Don't be embarrassed. She brushed her teeth. Can you see that? Get, get real close. Did you, get, did you see that? Okay. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, they're all on one side. And there was, um, remember the lady who was missing a tooth and now her tooth came back this morning that was interrupting the meeting? It's really upsetting when people are so exuberant in church. It's just, it's not the way it's supposed to be, is it? Anyways, and she was saying that her daughter you know, doesn't believe in anything about God and her daughter's going to have to deal with that when she gets home to England. So that's going to be, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, if you want to. Sure. The, it's, a, it's a different, it's more, I would say it's platinum is what you've got. It's very, it's a very soft kind of silver. Um, yeah, focus on if you can get her in there. Camber Gale. Now, I don't know if we have a video still in the resource center, but we had like a month, maybe six weeks of nonstop 
gold every night. And people, do you know the people who didn't believe it? Were the Christians. We got phone calls and hate letters and all this kind of like, how dare you compromise the, you know, the message of the gospel. Well, meanwhile, we had more non-Christians saved during those month and a half of meetings because they'd come. It was amazing. They'd come, they'd get, get a gold tooth, and, you know, it's right there. And we had, them, we had people check their neighbor before we prayed so they could see it, and it's like it's in their mom or their boyfriend or girlfriend. It was just an absolutely amazing. Okay, stand up, everyone. Check. Yeah, Heidi got one at one of our conferences. Check your neighbor's mouth right now. Look in your neighbor's mouth. See what they got. Okay. Are you ready? Put your hand on your neighbor's jaw. Your hand on your neighbor's jaw. If you really like them, put your hand on top of their teeth. Touch their teeth. Okay, come on up, sir. Okay. Ask the Lord to fill their mouth with good things. Say that over your friend. <laughs> Do you know there's a verse in the Bible that says, if you open your mouth, God will fill it. So, Father, fix our teeth, fix the gum disease, take out the cavities, fix our mouths. Come, Holy Spirit, release good things to your children tonight. Okay, check yourselves. Camera gal, over here. Camera gal, camera gal, camera lady. She's not listening to me. Sandra, just grab her. Come on up. This gentleman, remember he was up here this morning with one. How many do you now have? Four. He now has four. This is amazing, isn't it? Some people, they're, um, they seem to always get more. Okay, uh, Faustin, do you have the flashlight? Faustin, do you have the flashlight? <laughs> okay, open up, let me see. Up at, up at the top. Okay, you're going to have to get close in again. Just see if we can get that. Who's just got some teeth? I see hands over here. Anywhere else? How many of you has pain gone out of your teeth? Even now, you don't have the pain that you used to have in your teeth this morning. Where are those folks? Pain's gone. Over here, over here, over here. That's good. Oh, not sure if she's praising the Lord or putting her hands up. Well, it'll happen all through the meeting, friends. All through the meeting. That's just the way it goes. Let me tell you another story. Remember I told you this morning I was at a church in Glasgow and the pastor had been waiting for me for a month to come. He'd not dare pray because he wasn't sure that he had faith for this, but he wanted to see if God would do this in his church. Another one over here, okay. Um, and I think there must be one over here because people are gathering around someone. Anyways, at the church, I mentioned that before we even prayed, a pastor's wife got it. That night, in the, the house that the pastor lives in, He's in like a duplex, and the neighbors on the other side have become followers of Jesus and come to the church. The wife was at the meeting, and the husband was working, and when he got home at like 11.30 at night, she told him about what happened in the meeting, and she's one of these godly ladies that perseveres, that lives a holy life. He's a little bit, you know, come, uh, you know, sort of not always attending church, not really into it, uh, that kind of thing. Anyways, he's so amazed at what, what she said happened at the meeting. He said, well, he just put his hands on his own teeth and he said, Father, would you fill my tooth or something like that? And opened his mouth and right away he's got a gold tooth. He just prayed for himself after the meeting, late at night. We hear this knock on the door, not the door, sorry, on the wall that separates the two houses. And he yells through, I got a gold tooth. And Kevin yells back and says, 
send me a fax. And because he's got a fax machine there. So anyways, he sends a fax and told us the story. It was amazing. And the next morning, a lady who'd missed the, the meeting, we're, we're going to a, now a hotel for a retreat, and she hears about the meeting uh, on her cell phone as she's driving to the hotel, and at a stoplight, she prayed for herself, looked in the mirror, and she's got a gold tooth in the middle of traffic. It's amazing. You know, God likes doing those kind of things. It's the water to wine. It shows the extravagance of your God. We sang about that yesterday, didn't we? The extravagance of your God. Just to show you that he loves you. Okay, John, you were going to... John's not paying attention. John, you had some soaking center people to share. Do you have those names? Where's our soaking center leaders? Over here, most of you, great. We're so glad that you came. Uh, John's mentioned that we're thinking of doing this on an annual basis, and we haven't exactly set the date, but it, it will either be September next year or October next year where we're going to do another soaking-ish kind of thing. It may be called this very same title. We may call it something different, but uh, we'll be letting you folks know and bring lots of people from your soaking centers. How many of you brought people from your soaking centers? There's a number of you. Great. Wonderful. John. Oh, wow. All these teeth, Steve. It's amazing, isn't it? <clears throat> Steve didn't tell you, but he, his teeth turned all shiny, too. This was how many years ago, Steve? That was about five years ago, and it saved me from brushing my teeth. No, that's... No. Can, ladies, can to... I let you in on a secret? Men don't like brushing their teeth. How many, of you, how many again, of you knew Carol. that? How many of you already knew that? Oh. <laughs> Lord, shine them up for them. <laughs> A I fresh think we should do shine. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Gail Duffy, where are you, Gail? Come on up, please. Also, Karen Lusher from Tampa. Well, no, Temp, Arizona. Tempe. Is that right? Tempe, Arizona, yeah. Gail's from San Diego. And uh, Gail is uh, a part of an Episcopalian church, an Anglican church there in San Diego. And they have an amazing soaking center that goes right on in there as a part of their church's program sponsored by the church. And you run it, right? So what's happening over there, Gail? Well, <laughs> I guess I have to start by telling you that um, I came to Catch the Fire three, I think three years ago, and um, Heidi Baker spoke, and she said, if you do nothing else when you come here, Go to soaking prayer. So don't go to my workshop. Go to soaking prayer. So I did, and I didn't have no idea what I was in for. Um, it's not nice like it was now where you kind of had lots of room. We were in a room over here somewhere, and we were just like hot dogs on the rotisserie thing, like just right next to each other. I say we were within slobbering distance of each other. And during that time, uh, God spoke to me and said I was his child. And I didn't believe it. So I asked him again, what was that you said? And he said, this time, Gail, you are my precious child. And I just lost it and cried. And I guess um, in Ed's terminology, that would be my central event. And um, changed, my, changed my life at that point. And when I came out of the soaking time, I was lighter and I was like this and I met up with my three friends who had gone to Heidi Baker's workshop and they were all like oh, oh that was so much and I was just they were like what happened to you and I couldn't tell them it was just too personal at that that point to share but then when I went home my um, Episcopal priest pastor said um, is there something you want to start up at church just let me know I've never had anyone say that to me before. If something you want to start up at church, let me know. So a few months went by, and I thought, you know, there's this thing that I experience uh, called soaking prayer, and I'd like to try that, um, you know, and I explained a little bit, and I emailed up here to Connie Sinnott, because it was before you started the soaking kits, and she emailed me back with kind of how you did it and gave me some scripture, and I had their Passionate Bride CD, and I decided that would be my Lenten offering to the church to offer the soaking prayer. 
And I got to say, the first time, five people came, and three of them were related to me by blood or marriage. So <laughs> it was a little discouraging. But then the next time, more people came. And um, then I just offered it three times before that time between uh, Ash Wednesday and Easter. And then we didn't have it, but then people asked me, can we have that again? So we started offering it monthly, and people at my church uh, helped me so much. I wasn't leading it all the time. I was asking other people to come in and help and be a prayer minister. And just, um, I think the prayer ministers were getting as blessed, if not more, than the people soaking at times. Because just like here when you walk around and you're stepping over people, and some people you just see Jesus on their face, you get to see that at your soaking center all the time. You get to see Jesus on people's faces. So um, now we've had the soaking center about two and a half years, and we're seeing people come from the community, from different churches. Friends are telling people about it. And people are being um, emotionally healed, physically healed. The most um, amazing story so far from our soaking center is um, a friend of mine, Carol, who's with. She um, had a co- someone. I don't think a co-worker, but someone she has some business association with were out to lunch, and this lady couldn't move. She was in so much pain. Something happened to her. She woke up, and she really couldn't move even to get out of the restaurant to her car. So my friend Carol offered, well, you know, I can pray for you. And then she happened to have the soaking prayer brochure from our church in her purse, and she prayed for the lady, and the lady could make it out to her car. And then she gave her the soaking brochure and said, you might want to come to our soaking center. And sure enough, this gal came. And then she soaked, and then she came up for prayer after. And um, she came back about a couple months ago and said God, she wanted to tell me that God healed her at the soaking, uh, sent at, at the soaking prayer. And that she's now going on a mission trip in three weeks to, I think, Ethiopia. And it's just um, amazing. So... So I I want to encourage all of you that have thought about opening a center and all of you that just went through the school because you're going to be discouraged at times. I can't even tell you the silly things I've heard as people walk out the door. And like, the music was first person. The music was too loud. Next person. The music was too quiet. Next person, you know, some complaint. And and then I'm a sensitive person, but I finally, my friend and I realized says more about them than it does about what actually happened. And maybe this just wasn't the time for them. The best story about God's sense of humor is one lady came and we played the Passionate Bride CD and she said, oh, all those lyrics. Why did you have so many lyrics? I didn't care for that. I thought it was going to be instrumental. Then after she came to some other soaking prayers and got more into it and stuff, then I did the Passionate Bride again and she said, oh, that was the most beautiful... (laughs) CD. So you just don't know. God is just so amazing what he's doing. All the people he's bringing from different parts of San Diego. And then we try to, we offer, if someone wants to start it up at their church, then we'll come and we'll help you with that. And we've had three other Episcopal churches start up the soaking prayer in San Diego. That's really fantastic, isn't it? I forgot about the youth. The last thing I want to tell you was about our youth also have gotten into soaking prayer. And my friend Cindy has offered it at the middle school. um, They just had a middle school retreat. And the kids from my church, um, when you, you only have a little bit of free time at this retreat, and most of the kids would maybe play basketball or go do something. But um, when Cindy asked our kids, well, what were you doing during the free time? They said, well, we heard the worship team playing, so we were in soaking. And these are 12-year-olds. So. Wow. Wonderful, Gail. Well, take all of San Diego, won't you? Just get them all soaking, the whole city. That'd be great. Stretch your hands toward her and bless her here. Father, thank you for what you're doing in this woman of God. Lord, there's so many godly people in the Episcopal Church that just want to connect with the Father's love. And I ask that you would 
pour out a mighty outpouring upon them in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill her up right here. Just keep coming, Lord. Karen, come and tell us what's going on in Arizona, will you? Stand over here. That'd be good. Uh, my husband and I started our soaking center in about April, <clears throat> and um, prior to that, I had come last November, and during a soaking session, it was, there were so many people that ministered to you here. This is such a beautiful place. Um, anyway, uh, as someone was praying for me, I, I saw Jesus. And uh, it was so neat. He was just laughing. And he said, finally, you're starting to get it. <laughs> so it was really neat. And then later, I heard Father God say to me, you know, you invited me into your heart when you were just a little girl. But now I want you to live in my heart. So that was a whole new concept to me. But it's really been beautiful. And this church we're in San Diego, uh, my husband and I started going to the soaking seminars in Tucson. And we had missed a couple, so we went over to San Diego and met Gail. And what a sweet, oh, what a sweet fellowship. And how they loved on us. And Vicki was there taking care of it. And we got to meet um, June and, and the Ar Arnolds and everyone. It was just, we were blown away. It was wonderful. And uh, my husband, I had come with some other ladies from our church. I was very, very worried about all of this. <laughs> and um, the Lord just told me, just chill, I'm here, <laughs> and, and it's okay. And so um, it was really wonderful. And when I went back, my husband said, there's something different, I think I need to go to Toronto. <laughs> so we, we came to show me your glory, and that was really wonderful. But he had been coming, we'd been going to these um, soaking seminars in Tucson and in San Diego, and as we were going to those, we started having, well, we took my sister and her husband, and she said, I'm buying you a soaking kit. You need to do this. <laughs> so I said, God, is that from you? So we started doing that with just a few of our friends about once a month. And, um, and then um, after the Show Me Your Glory, my husband said, we need to do this every week. And so um, it was really interesting because one of our first times, uh, we, we invited some close friends. They came a couple of times, and then they were, that really wasn't where they were. And then... Uh, we told, you know, some other friends about it, and this one couple came. So we, we just realized we just have to say, Holy Spirit, bring whomever you want, and we'll be ready, because that's what they told us. They said, you just prepare a place, and the Holy Spirit will come. So we got our home ready, and one couple came. And um, a sweet couple, uh, he was a doctor. And uh, they came in, and we just... You know, we were kind of shy about this because, we, we, you know, this was kind of unusual. And we turned on the music and uh, we just, you know, kind of, my husband and I, we just found a place on the floor and, and he lay on our sofa and uh, we played a CD or two and then we said, well, you know, when we get done, let's just all sit at the table and we had a few little things to munch on and, and uh, he did not say one thing. And I thought, and he turned, he was white. And I thought, he's not, he is not comfortable. And um, so we were sitting at the table, and, and the wife shares, she was really touched. And he did not say one word. And I thought, oh, Lord, he's so uncomfortable. Be, you know, just, it's okay, be with him, whatever. And so they leave, and so we go, well, she liked it, <laughs> and, and we liked it, and whatever, God. Well, uh, two days later, my friend, the lady that had come, called me, and she said, you know, my husband was spellbound. He couldn't talk. And uh, she said, he was, he was in awe, because as he lay on the sofa, uh, the Holy Spirit started ministering to him. He was a Vietnam vet. And he'd not been able to talk about it, his, his horrendous experiences in Vietnam. But the Lord came and ministered to him and gave him some inner healing. And he, he, he was spellbound. And so she said, you know, it was wonderful. And never in their marriage had he been able to talk about his Vietnam experiences. But it opened it up. And you know what? 
Jesus is so good. And so, you know, we've had, he hasn't come back too often. It's still a little new to him, but it's okay. He's, he's busy. And, and, but since then, the Lord's just been, we never know. We just, we do this on Sunday nights at 6 o'clock. We've been playing some of the teaching, and we found that, wow. You know, we just, we went to, we've gone to 100 things this last year. We just, everything, we want to go to everything <laughs> because we, we've been so hungry. And so we went to um, uh, the Father Love in, in San Jose. And, uh, oh, they've loved, you know, Eddie's talks and 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 the Arnott's talks, and we just keep playing them over and over again, and the people are blessed, and there's ministry at the end of them, and then we, and then we turn on a CD, and, and we get together, and we pray afterwards, and God keeps bringing a core of singles, and we find that we just love them so much. Uh, it's just such a blessing. So you know what? It's small. We never know. We maybe have four, five, six, one, one night. We had 15. We were shocked. Some of them never came back, but it was, it was fun. <laughs> so, you know, God is good. And I just, I just can't believe there's a place like this where there's so much, you know, it's just like a taste of heaven. And there's so much love. And, you know, who would think that in, I mean, we're from the desert. Who would think that way up in frozen Canada there would be all this <laughs> fire? <laughs> We want this fire in Arizona, but you know, it'll come. <laughs> Praise God. Bless you, Karen. This is great. Oh, Jesus, yes. Oh, Father, thank you that she's found a place. You've given her a ministry, and you're moving by your wonderful Holy Spirit. It's so good. It's so good. We love it, Lord. Thank you for including every one of us in your great kingdom and your great work. Fill her up now with your spirit, I pray. Just let it come. Fire on her ear. Thank you, Lord. I'm just wondering where that English lady is that was probably about as excited about getting a gold tooth as I've ever seen anybody. There she is. Come on up here, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you were so excited that you were like almost beside yourself. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Still excited? I am, I am. Well, you know, when I came here, I told you how I felt, didn't I? Yes. And I've been feeling it for a very long time, you know. Um... I guess everybody heard that, so I won't go over it again. But, you know, God making me feel that he put me first. Then God speaking to me about how I just can't offend the Lord easily anymore. Then being so loved by the people of God. Having my ear restored with its hearing. And now having a gold cap on my tooth, what can I say? <laughs> Jesus, thank you for being so amazing. Stretch your hands toward her and say... She says, I don't go down, nothing happens to me. Well, hang on. Your ear was just healed, and you guys put a gold tooth in your mouth. <laughs> Fire on her here. Let it come in Jesus' name. Fire on that spine, and just uh, let her enjoy your presence. Give her a good big drink of the new wine, Lord. A good big drink of the new wine. I love those people that nothing ever happens to them, don't you, Steve? Oh, hallelujah. Can I have the ushers come, please, at this time? And we will receive our evening offering. 
We're going to have a great night tonight. Fire tunnels. Woo! How many of you have never been in a fire tunnel? Never ever. Wave at me. Well, I want you to know they're very, very biblical. It is the laying on of hands, you know. For all who dare, enter in. Really, you're, you're walking between two columns of ministry team. And the idea is to try not to fall down. Try to make it all the way to the end. But we do need a few... We don't need catchers for this, but we do need a few draggers. And so we got, what, six fire tunnels, Steve, did you say? So we need about 12 or, I don't know, maybe 20 guys to help us as draggers. Can I have some volunteer draggers, please? More, 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 more. I need more. I need more. Okay. I mean, this, you won't have to go to the gym next week if you just volunteer for this because you can help get people out of the way okay so what uh you will do is to come on up to the front when steve's given everyone instructions about what to do and uh he, we, he will assign you either at the back or to the side where um where these will be set up and then you can you know carefully drag people out of the way for those who don't make it all the way through the fire tunnel. Is that right? So we're going to have a great night tonight. I'm so thankful the Holy Spirit is fun, aren't you? He is just so much fun. All right. We appreciate your giving and the offerings. But once again, let's ask the Lord what he would have us do. And then we can give joyfully and in faith. And sowing into good soil. Believing God for a harvest for his kingdom and for his name's sake. Let's pray together. Loving Father, you are so good. Your mercy endures forever. I ask you to bless your people now as they give and sow into this offering. Lord, we are sowing into revival, both here and around the world. We want to see your kingdom come in power and in love. We want to see your will be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. And so bless your people right now. Prosper them as they give. May it be a joy and a delight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, take envelopes from the seat pocket there in front of you. And uh, if you're giving by credit card, fill that out completely. And uh, if you're giving cash, also use an envelope. We give you a receipt. And uh, if you make out a check, make it to TICF. You don't need an envelope if your details are all on the check. So... So there we are. God bless you as you give. Steve, do you have any announcements other than that? We're done. All of the, the great product, you know, the CDs and DVDs. The DVDs are available as a complete set. So are the CDs. I love the CDs, really, because you can uh, put them on your iPod and then listen to them in the car and all that kind of thing or on the airplane or wherever you go. And so... Uh, but there's some awesome stuff that God has been giving to us this week. And, you know, Ed Peoric's teaching on soaking in contemplative prayer and then the whole thing about the Trinity today it was just amazing. And there was so much life in it for me. And I just am so thankful for what God has done. Where's the other microphone, Steve? That'll be better. Amen. Are you having a good time? Woo! I'm wondering, where is the, uh, where's that young couple from Holland that uh, came to the soaking school? Matthew, where are you? Matthew. Come on up here real quick. I mean, this is amazing. This young man is a nephew of Brother Andrew, the Bible smuggler. Remember God's smuggler? and uh, his dear wife with him. And uh, he has started a soaking center over in Holland that now has 800 young people coming to it every week. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this is great, Rebecca, isn't it now? You had one of the most remarkable salvations I've ever heard of. Hasn't she? Tell us what's happening in Holland when all of these young people come together. What city are you in and what goes on? Okay, hi, my name is Matthew Vennerstein and I'm coming from Holland. We are with uh, 10 Dutchies, they're sitting there. We can wave, guys. And uh, we actually um, have a really small ministry and uh, since short, the Lord is really blessing us. We are part of uh, Soul Survivor Holland in a team and uh, what they're doing, they're coming together all the time in May with like now 4,000 young people. And uh, we really believe to, uh, to come here to start something like soaking and fire nights actually. So it's not like, like that we are now already with, with 800 people, but uh, we just actually had a good time with uh, Pastor John and, and Carol this afternoon. And they are willing to come next year to Holland to do actually a, a soaking, <laughs> like a sort of soaking conference in Holland. <laughs> And uh, then with like a three days fire conference, whatever, because I, I believe Holland is ready for it. And um, yeah, we're really sick of religion, huh? you know, and uh, a lot of, yeah, the finger in the dike, it's true, because you, out of the dike, true, yeah, we need flooding there. And you see a lot of young people getting sick of religion, you know, not in a rebellious way, you know what I mean? But they want the truth, they want reality, they want the fire of the Holy Spirit. And you know, it's great to come here via, like it's my seventh time here, I love it. But you know, I, I'm like, Lord, we cannot come with 800 young kids to Toronto next year. So let me just, you know, ask a lot of some people from, from here to, to bless us and to see that a fire hits Holland because it's time for windmills to get on fire, yeah? So, yeah. Yeah, and actually, yeah, that's it actually. Actually, what we're a little bit doing is we're traveling around and we're just releasing the fires. We just came out of India. Next week we go to Uganda. The day, or the next, in, in December we go to some unreached areas in Nigeria, not to the big crowd like in Lagos, but really to little small villages. And we just actually came uh, uh, from India and we really saw the Holy Spirit just felt in Hindu villages and people, people just received Jesus. And there was one lady, is it okay quickly? Because it's so easy. It's so easy, you just, you, you just need to go, you know, in, under the fire of the Holy Spirit. And I, I was thought, you know, you need to have five years Bible school. And, but no, so we just went to a, a remote area and it was totally Hindu and so one lady came up and she was like you know um, what are you guys doing here said, we preach Jesus and she said you know um, can, can Jesus heals me and we said yes yeah. so one of our team members said you know Jesus will heal you tonight and she had a heart problem a knee problem and a feet problem something like that and she said if Jesus is willing to heal me tonight I will proclaim through this microphone that Jesus is the Lord of the Lord and she was like important in that village so instant, uh, this guy just stretched his hand out and said, Jesus wants to heal you. I mean, he's, it's his will to heal people, amen. <laughs> Even Hindu, you know, you, you're not um, uh, like, you don't need to be a Christian or something. So uh, she got healed, like power hit her directly. And then she proclaimed, she was the evangelist that evening, not we. <laughs> I mean, she proclaimed that Jesus was the king of kings. And you know, the village received Jesus that night. Amen. Whoa. <laughs> This is great. You know, Carol, a few years ago, had an amazing vision about fireballs going across the English Channel, landing into Holland, and setting windmills on fire, and landing in the red light district in Amsterdam, where Wednesday you guys like, like to go for your outreaches. And so I think it's time. Holland was on fire. Let me have all, the, all these Dutch people that are here from the, from the Netherlands. Come and stand up on this front line here. Come on. That's right. Just line up right here on this green line. Stand there. Right around. Right around. Oh, yeah. Father God, we ask that your wonderful power would fall upon this nation that at one time was so hot for revival. And once again, Lord God, let the glory of God come upon them. Holy Spirit, fill them here. Holy Spirit, fill them here. Stretch your hands out toward them here. Fire on you, fire on you here, fire on you here. Fire on you here, fire of God on you. In Jesus' wonderful name. 
Oh, kingdom come. Ooh, fire on him. Oh, yes. Lord, I ask that your glory would be their portion here. In Jesus' name, let it come. In Jesus' name, let it come. Fill them up, Lord. Fill him up, Lord God. Let it come. Fire on him here. In Jesus' wonderful name. It is the fire of heaven. It is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Woo. Fire on him. Yes, Lord God. Double it on them. Double, double, double in Jesus' name. Oh, Father. We want Europe to be gathered up into the glory of God once again, Father. Germany and Belgium and Denmark and Sweden and Norway and Finland and France and Spain and Portugal, Italy, all of it. Let the glory of God be poured out on that place. Let's stand and worship him. Oh God, keep it coming, Holy Spirit. Keep it coming.
Kelly. Grace like rain. Man. Woo. Turn to the person next to you and say more of the fire of God on you tonight. Hasn't the worship just been off the chart? Oh Lord, we love worshiping you. With all our heart, we love worshiping you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Kelly and, uh, and her team, Rob and the others, that many of them will be with us worshiping on the uh, conference at sea next February. And we'll have a great time doing that outreach in Jamaica and everything else. So, the fun never quits. Woo! A big part of me can't hardly believe we've been doing this for 12 years, you know. It's like amazing. By the way, Thank you for the mission offering last night. We uh, are blessed to have taken up $160,000 for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk to you tonight about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wants to be your best friend. And the way that happens is through the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. So we're talking about the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit's part in that tonight. When we think about the kingdom of God, we need to just put a couple of things into perspective. First of all, God has always been in control of the universe. He has never, ever been out of control. And I was sharing with the group the other day, get a, get a visual picture of how vast the universe is. Just very quickly, the galaxy we're in called the Milky Way it has about 80 billion stars in it 80 billion different suns in one galaxy our Sun is one of the lesser suns among 80 billion others give or take and there are about 80 billion galaxies that they can count in the in the whole universe when they swing that Hubble telescope in every direction and then count the square inches on the composite picture, they're estimating that there are 80 billion galaxies that they can see. And you could ask the question, well, what's beyond those that you can't see? 80 billion more probably. And so your mind boggles, doesn't it, trying to get your thoughts around infinity and eternity. And yet our God holds them all in the palm of his hand and knows every one of them by name. Plus, he has time to count the hair on your head. Just feel the hair on your head there a minute. He knows how many there are. He's an awesome God. And he is totally and absolutely in control. Always was, always will be. But something went wrong on planet Earth, didn't it? When you zoom in on the Milky Way galaxy and you zoom in on our particular sun and solar system and zoom in on planet Earth, you find out that there was a fall on this planet. And Lucifer, 
who many think was a worship leader in heaven, was cast down and came to this planet and disaster struck, really. And so there's an isolated little cancer cell in this vast universe called planet Earth. And even in the midst of that, instead of God saying, just vaporize it, get rid of it, no, he comes up with a plan of redemption. Say redemption. And his plan is simply this. Heaven will come to earth and heaven's king will come to earth and rescue it and redeem it. That's the plan. How can it be when they have rebelled so seriously? The king himself will come and die in their place and pay the price and pay the outstanding debt so that all of the required and necessary justice of God will be taken care of and the God of love can open his arms and welcome a rebellious planet back in. Whosoever will may come. What a plan. And Daniel, in Daniel chapter 2, gives us an overview of this. Do you remember Nebuchadnezzar's dream where he saw this dream of the remaining five world empires? Two had already come and gone, Egypt and Assyria. And now there's Babylon and the Medes and the Persians and the Greeks and then the Roman Empire, east and west, and finally the ten toes. And Daniel explains and interpret what the king's dream meant about that great uh, uh, statue that he saw. And he writes in Daniel 2 verse 44, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to others, but it shall break in pieces and consume all those kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. I love that forever part, don't you? Say forever. The kingdom of God coming shall stand forever. And then in the next verse he adds this, and the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof is sure. And Daniel is saying absolutely, much more certain than tomorrow's sunrise. The kingdoms of this world will run their course. And then at the time of the end, the God of heaven will come and fully establish his kingdom on earth. And meanwhile, we have visitations of heaven coming down, increasing and increasing to rescue fallen men. So God's kingdom plan is unfolding. The plan that he prophesied by Isaiah the prophet and many of the other prophets that there would be a day when God stands up and makes himself known. There would be a day when the Messiah will come and redeem. There will be a day when the lion will lie down with the lamb. There will be a day when they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and neither will they learn war anymore. And there will be a day of love and peace that settles down over the whole earth. And the King of kings and the Lord of lords himself shall rule and reign from this place. And isn't it amazing with all the vastness of heaven and all the many options that he must have, it's so fitting that he would come to the lowliest place, the, probably the only fallen planet, I dare say, in all the vast universe, and say, from there I will rule once I have redeemed it. This is the kingdom of God. And it is coming. And it is upon us. And so we can talk about the kingdom will come. Daniel saying, it shall come in that day. It's always been. God's always been ruling out there. But in terms of planet earth now, that day will come when the kingdom is fully established. And so... We're looking forward to that day with great hope. That is the great hope of the church. When Jesus Christ comes back in all of his power and all of his glory. 
But in the meantime, we see that the invasion has already started. And we know that Isaiah prophesied all these things. And Jeremiah and Zechariah and many, many others of the prophets. But in Matthew chapter 3, we see the process kicking up into another gear. John the Baptist, the forerunner, came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Look at his message. Repent. Turn around. Instead of going away from God, turn around, go towards God, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The rule and reign of God is within reach. That's John's message. And he begins proclaiming the kingdom now. The kingdom is here now. The kingdom is available now. And so as we pull these two thoughts together, we, we're dealing with the fact that the kingdom is now but not yet, in all of its fullness, now but not yet. And John is announcing the kingdom of God. And then suddenly, right after that, Jesus comes in Matthew chapter 4. And he's baptized by John, and then he begins his ministry. Look at verse 17. What does he say? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, Ed put this together so well the other night with people in all the contemplative prayer and they're, they're pressing into God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and they're waiting upon Him and they're desiring Him and they're experiencing His love and everything else. But the agent, the one who makes all of that happen is none other than God the Holy Spirit who's bringing the kingdom and breaking in upon that hungry heart right here, right now, right in the here and now. And God wants his kingdom to come to you now. And not just once, but again and again and again, with ever-increasing power, with ever-increasing fullness. And the link that connects the unseen with the seen world right now is childlike faith that you can move ahead in knowing that the Father loves you. So you can say, bring it on, Lord. I want your kingdom to come to me now. And that's the message of Jesus. Now, Jesus was different from John in this respect. He not only proclaimed and announced the kingdom, but he demonstrated the kingdom. He demonstrated the kingdom through signs and wonders and the amazing love that he exhibited toward many, many people. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then if you go to verse 23, 24, we see him demonstrating the kingdom. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. And then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them, and great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. So Jesus was not just saying, God's kingdom is within reach for you, but he was saying, you can see the kingdom demonstrated in your lives. You can see the evidence of supernatural miracles. He wants to bring heaven to earth. Tell the person next to you, he wants to bring heaven to earth. Heaven is coming to earth right here. Now, what does it look like when heaven comes to earth? Things like gold teeth start to happen. How can that be? You know, I want you to know something that 
When all the gold teeth things started happening among us, it stretched the heck out of me. Now, at one level, I was having a lot of fun, but on the other, I'm like, what? Like, this doesn't make any sense. God, what are you doing? And it was funny that something like that was, was fine for Argentina. It was okay in Brazil, but when we came back home to Toronto, all of a sudden, it's like, how can, how can God take a bad tooth and all of a sudden make it gold? You say, are you sure it's gold? No, I'm not. It just looked like gold. Or silver, something shiny. Or how can he take poisonous mercury amalgam fillings and completely remove them from a person's mouth? They just seem to morph into real porcelain teeth. It was amazing. And uh, for some reason or other, because... It seemed as though metal, precious metal, was supernaturally appearing. It really, really stretched me. And I had to come to terms with deep unbelief in my own heart about certain things and realize again, you know something? There's nothing impossible with him. With God, all things are possible. He really, really can do anything he wants to do. And uh, that's a part of being childlike, isn't it? And that's the inbreaking of the kingdom. Do you know something? There are no bad teeth in heaven. Did you know that? There's no sickness in heaven. There's no arthritis in heaven. There's no bad backs in heaven. No migraines in heaven. No cancer in heaven. No tumors in heaven. No cripples in heaven, no blindness in heaven, no deafness in heaven. And when heaven comes to earth, the, the, the result of that is incredible life flowing through people. And this is what Jesus was announcing. Heaven has come to earth. Heaven is within reach. Now, the very fact that the language says it's within reach tells us something. You don't just sit there passively with your arms folded and say, well, let him just dump it on me then, if that's what he wants to do. No, it's not works and it's not striving, but nevertheless, it's not passivity either. There's, there's an active uh, action and expectation that goes on where you say, oh, well, then I'll have it then. And you reach out. And you begin to appropriate it, not by striving, not by trying to believe, 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 but just resting in the love and taking a hold of what God is offering you. Now, I want you to reach out and take a hold of heaven right here. Just be a child for a moment. This is for the children. Luke chapter 10. Thank you, Father. You've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Now take a handful of heaven. Now what's that look like? Are you trying to grasp the air? What is it this what is the substance? Well, it's it's this presence of the person God the Holy Spirit who wants to come and be your best friend. He's the bringer of the kingdom to you. You remember the day Jesus was accused of casting demons out by the power of demons, Beelzebub. And he said, no, well, Satan can't, if he casts out himself, then his kingdom is divided and will not stand. But if I cast out demons by the finger of God, the Holy Spirit, then the kingdom of God has come among you. And God the Holy Spirit is the one who brings heaven to you. He brings it to you in such reality that you know that you know that you know that you have been touched by heaven. You have, you have appropriated the kingdom of heaven. 
Jesus demonstrated it so well. Acts chapter 10 talks about how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. He was anointed. What does that mean? The Holy Spirit came upon him and equipped him so that he could be the one who br would bring the kingdom to suffering humanity. He was leading the invasion to planet Earth where miracles were taking place and people were convinced of two things, the reality of God and the niceness of God, the caring love of God was being demonstrated. Now, it didn't stop there. If we go to Matthew 10, we see some interesting things. Jesus is moved with compassion because there's so many people. Now, listen, how many pastors here tonight? <clears throat> Most of us would say we could really do with a load more people in our church. How many would be happy if God would double the size of your congregations? We'd be all right with that, wouldn't we, Steve? Jesus had the opposite problem, too many people. So many people, he couldn't minister to all of them. And so he's moved with compassion. They're like sheep with no shepherd. They're, they're out there milling around. They're all trying to touch him, touch his clothes, and they can't get to him. So what does he do? He actions the next phase of his plan. Verse 1, he called his 12 disciples to him and he gave them power, which is really authority, over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. When we read the same thing in Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, we see that he gave them power and authority. Power and authority was delegated to the 12 and he sent them out to be the ones who the Holy Spirit now would use them additionally to bring the kingdom of God. And so they immediately saw signs and wonders and miracles happening. And the same kind of fruit that was the ministry of Jesus began happening in their lives. Look at the instructions. Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. As you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Now that was the instructions for these guys who didn't really know a whole lot. They were sent out with power and authority to make a proclamation that God is invading the planet with the kingdom of love and the kingdom of righteousness. And they were to pick up the authority and the power that was delegated to them and instructed to bring the kingdom to suffering humanity, to advance the invasion of planet Earth, and nothing could stop them. And then... When the 12 had come back, he sent 70 others. Say 70 others. <clears throat> Luke chapter 10. It's amazing. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. And he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Run, brother, run. I'm glad those two guys didn't collide, aren't you? How many want to be one of those 70 others? He gave them the same instructions. Look at... Uh, Verse 9, Luke 10, verse 9. Heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come to you. Now, I want you to get a picture once again about 
the magnitude and the majesty and the power and the glory of the kingdom of God. Can you picture his throne? Can you imagine the one upon whom you cannot even look upon and live and the brightness of his presence and the awesomeness of his power, the one who holds the entire universe in his hand and knows them all by name, he's the one sending and orchestrating the invasion and the Holy Spirit is the facilitator. Kingdom of heaven coming to earth. Well, those 70 went out and they came back and they said, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us through your name. This is amazing. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Now here's a verse for your fridge. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Come on, give him a shout. And let me give you a little aside right here. We as God's people, we've got to get out of this dualistic theology where we think that the devil is as powerful as God almost. And so there's this seesaw battle going back and forth and... And you getting in the middle and your prayers somehow managed to tip the balance. And phew, that was a close call, but we managed to win another one. Once again, get a vision of the hugeness and the majesty and the power and the glory of the kingdom of God. And there's an invasion coming to earth right now. And nothing stops the Holy Spirit. Absolutely nothing. He has never lost a battle. Never, never. And when the kingdom of God comes, the, the demons run for cover. Can you imagine Jesus when he was confronted by the Gadar Gadarene demoniac, this poor, pathetic creature, naked, out of his mind, living among the tombs, cutting himself on the rocks and chains dangling from his wrists and his feet. And What is your name? Legion, for we are many. And they're saying, if you cast this out, at least let us go into the pigs. And he said, go. And the whole lot just came out of that man and instantly he's in his right mind. That's the power of the kingdom demonstrated. That's what it looks like, everybody. Our God is a mighty God. And when he speaks, I, I want you to know things happen. And now he's delegating his authority First to the 12, then to the 70, and then to you. And these 70 are blown away. And Jesus is telling them, I have given you authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Don't let people tell you that revival will not come until you bind the strong man and all of that over your community. That should take you about two minutes. And now go and bring deliverance one person at a time. You know, I was so impressed reading Brother Yun's book on the house church revival in China, The Heavenly Man. How many read that book? And he said, well, they have a strategy when they send missionaries out into a new village in a new town, here's the strategy. Now, keep in mind, these missionaries are about 16 or 17 years of age, all right? And they go into a town, 
And they say, oh, Holy Spirit, lead us to the most needy, messed up person in the whole village. And they ask around, who is the most problem in the town? Who's the most troubled? Well, this one story was, well, the guy that lives on that corner, he's the problem. Don't go near that corner. Why? Because he's out of his mind. He runs out of the house with a machete and, and starts hacking and chopping at everybody who you know, comes near him. And they said, that's just the one we want. And off they go to that corner. Sure enough, the guy comes out swinging his machete and threatening and screaming and everything. And they said, in the name of Jesus, come out of the man. And boom, he falls to the ground and he's delivered. And the whole village wants to know, how did you help that man? How did you set him free? And they tell him, it's this Jesus, the Savior of the world, who has given power and authority unto us to bring his kingdom into this village. And they do it over and over and over and over again. I mean, what's going on in China is just an incredible, awesome miracle. I hope you read up on these things. And I'm just thrilled at those kind of stories of like an 18-year-old girl pastoring a church of 20,000 people. How does this happen? Tell the person next to you, by the Holy Spirit. He's the one who facilitates bringing the kingdom. The Holy Spirit, your friend. Well, that was the 70. And so Jesus is saying to us, Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And this needs to be understood alongside of the promise of the Holy Spirit. Because here's the promise. He shall baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Now the promise of the Holy Spirit is, is given with, with two images and, and two metaphors in the New Testament that I really like. The first one is you will be clothed with power from on high. You can read that. In uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Wait in Jerusalem until you are clothed with power. Some versions say endued with power, but the Greek is actually clothed. Now the Holy Spirit has a spiritual garment for you that we call the anointing. And he wants you to put that on. Now I want you to just in your childlikeness tonight, in your mind's eye, just imagine you're going to get a, a new jacket tonight to wear home. It's called a greater anointing. You receive it by faith, but of course you usually can feel it. But I want you to just stand up and put your jacket on right now. Holy Spirit, hand it to them. As we're clothed with power from on high. Yeah, it's got a hood on it too. Put the hood up. And button it up down the front. And flex your muscles. My gosh. I'm strong. Look out, devil. <laughs> I'm going to tread on you. Clothed with power from heaven. Now the next metaphor, take your seats again. The next metaphor is amazing as well. where it says John is saying and others are saying and Jesus himself is saying, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now baptized has lost its meaning a bit in religious traditions. Here's what the word means, immersed marinated 
soaked, pickled. You will be put under the river of the kingdom of heaven, that river that flows from the throne of God, and you're going to be held under until you swallow mouthfuls and you're completely saturated outside and in and the power of that river is permeating your very being and your very nature. Baptized, immersed in the Holy Spirit. Now I don't know how you're going to do this but let me have you stand up. Now then, just behind you is a rushing, flowing river that flows from the throne of God. Now I want you to fall in. Just fall back in the river. <laughs> Put your head under. And open your mouth. And swallow it. Breathe it. It's the river of God. And it is a river of fire. It's boiling hot. It's full of electricity. It, it's shocking. It's glory. It's awesome. It's heaven. Come to earth. You shall be filled, baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now that's the Father's promise. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. He commanded them, do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which you've heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized, immersed, submerged, saturated, marinated, pickled with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. This is the kingdom of God. The wonderful, supernatural coming of the Holy Spirit, the inbreaking of the kingdom upon you is heaven coming not merely to earth somewhere, but right where you are, right to you, heaven comes down and fills your life inside and out, clothed with it, saturated with it, permeated with it, the glory and the fire of God. These promises are again and again and again in Scripture. Jesus saying the Holy Spirit is going to come. John chapter 14, verse 16. I'll pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive because it does not see him nor know him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. Look at John 16, verse 7. Jesus is speaking. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus is saying... It's better for you that I leave the earth because now the Holy Spirit is going to bring the kingdom to every believer. 
And so the ministry and the invasion really is spread worldwide. Now we're excited because we have soaking centers in 62 nations and we have partners in harvest churches in about 20 nations right now. But Jesus has people in every nation. There is not one nation that does not have Christians that are full of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? And so the invasion is going very, very well. I want you to know you're on the winning team tonight. There's about one billion of us on the face of the earth, born-again, spirit-filled Christians, and gaining rapidly every day. Why? Because nothing stops the Holy Spirit. Nothing can stand before him. He sweeps everything out of his way. Now, Jesus had an amazing comment in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, when he said this, the kingdom of God is within you. So yes, it's out there. Yes, it's coming in all its fullness. Yes, there are things going on now demonstrating the invasion of the kingdom from time to time. But that kingdom is within you. The Holy Spirit has come and put the reality of the kingdom of God with in you so that the, the love all the love that the trinity is has been deposited in you now i would say this that if you're not a believer the kingdom of darkness is within you and the kingdom of darkness would love to stay in many of you but as you press in to God and say, no, I don't want the darkness, that's what I've watched the Holy Spirit do here for all these years. Uh, he comes in, and, and we've just watched it again and again. The good stuff comes in, the bad stuff goes out. The good stuff in, the bad stuff out. Good stuff like what? Like love, like joy, like peace, like healing, like prophetic revelation, like love for God like never before. It's pouring in. And what's going out? The fear, the shame, the anger, <clears throat> the secret sins, the habitual sins, the bondages, the fears, all of that, driving it out, driving it out, driving it out. And God wants to use you and I even in the midst of our transformation. Nobody in the room is perfect yet, are you? But you're getting that way. Right? Right? You're getting that way, going from glory to glory. And so that's our constant prayer. Oh, Holy Spirit, bring the kingdom of God and fill me. The kingdom of God is within you. Another thing Jesus said that I find is interesting, he says, the, king, the, <clears throat> the kingdom, my kingdom, is not of this world. It's not of this world. It's not the world's way. It's the right side up kingdom and the world is upside down. So the world's way is take, hold, keep, get. The kingdom way is love, give, share, bless. And the world says, huh, that's stupid. Nice guys finish last. No, nice guys finish first when they're centered in the kingdom of God. In John chapter 18, verse 36, Jesus answered Pilate. Now, Pilate was puzzled. He met Jesus. He was keen to meet him. And because of his wife's dream and many other things, he wanted to let him go. And he realized the political pressure from the Jewish leaders that was being brought to him. Crucify this man. Pilate's like, why? What has he done wrong? Well, he's stirring up the people. He claims to be the son of God. He claims to be this and that. And Pilate is saying, who are you? Are you a king? Yes, you said it. But my kingdom is not of this world. And then he said this. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, 
then my servants would fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from this world. I used to read that verse and think, you know, his servants like Peter had got a sword somewhere and he was resisting and, you know. But as I thought about it, I said, no. Jesus could, if he wanted to, he could have mobilized half the nation. Can you imagine? Send the 120 out and tell everybody everywhere that Jesus is in trouble and he needs all of his friends in Jerusalem right away. Half the nation would have shown up because they believed in him. If my kingdom was of this world, my servants would fight. But you see, my kingdom is not of this world. And the Father has a different plan. The invasion is right on schedule. And we're going to do this death blow to the devil and all of his uh, minions and all of his demons and all of his plans. And what's that going to look like? The king of the universe himself is going to allow them to take him and crucify him on the cross. Now see, the Jewish leaders were reasoning this way. If we crucify him, not just stone him, not just beat him and let him go, but if we crucify him, then all the people will know that he could not possibly be the Messiah. Because the law is clear, cursed is everyone that hangs upon a tree. And so we want him crucified. They, they had no insight into the amazing plan of God, that God himself would willing, willingly become a curse for us so that our sin could be paid by someone else and you and I could go free simply for the asking. He did not and could not and would not compromise on his integrity and his justice, but paid the fine in full himself so that you and I could go free. What an incredible plan. What a savior. You say, wait a minute. What kind of a king are you? He's the most loving, most unselfish, most incredible person that you and I have ever heard of. Now, I was meditating on all this one time, and I, I thought, Lord... You're so great. There's much mystery. There's so many things I want to ask you when I see you. And I began to just sort of wonder, you know, what would it be like to see Jesus for the first time? Can you imagine your first day in heaven, standing in the full revelation of his glory, and his presence, standing before him? And I thought, oh, Lord, when I stand before you and see you face to face for the first time, oh, can I have an appointment? I'll make it right now. I want 24 hours with you, just me and you, all to myself. So I got so many questions, you know. Why weren't more healed? Why weren't more saved? What about this? What about that? What does this scripture mean? I just want to get some answers. And then I had this strange thought. Well, that's what I want to do when I see you. But Jesus, what do you want to do when, when you see me for the first time? And he spoke back to me in a flash. He said, John, I just want to wash your feet. Well, it completely blindsided me. I just collapsed and sobbing heap on the floor. Saying, what kind of a king are you? What kind of a savior are you? You're a million times more wonderful than I ever could imagine that you are. You've absolutely hooked me with your love. You're just incredible. I'll do whatever I can do for you. I am yours, yours, yours. If that's what you're really like, I'm in forever for good. And you know, that's what he's really, really like. He washed the disciples' feet. I can relate to Peter, can't you, saying, I, I can never allow you to wash my feet, Jesus. Because after all, you're the Lord. And he says, well, if, if you don't let me wash you, you can't have any part in this thing. Because this is a kingdom of love and a kingdom of humility. There's no room for 
pride or all that kind of thing. This is just the kingdom of love. It's love that holds this kingdom together. And Peter said, well, then wash all of me. You see, this is, this is what we're involved in. This is why it's not by works of righteousness that we, we've done, but it's according to his mercy that he saved us. If you're here tonight, maybe you just come in the first night and you're not fully committed to Jesus. If you've never surrendered your life to him, I beg of you, don't go out that door. Don't sort of get it all together and get the same old mindset of the world back in place and go on living the way you are. We're living in the time of the end. And the Spirit of God is calling multitudes of people to surrender to the Lord of life and the King of kings and Lord of lords. And if you're wise, you'll listen to him. But it'll cost you something. It'll cost you your pride. So what do you mean? I mean, you'll have to admit that you're a sinner. You have to admit that you've done wrong and you owe heaven a great debt. And you need the Savior to settle the score for you with the justice of God so that you could freely enter in. This is the kingdom of love that is invading the planet right now. He could have called and half the nation would have come and fought for his life. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? He could have called 12 legions of angels to destroy the world and set him free. But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? Can you imagine the power of 12 legions of angels? One angel destroyed the Assyrian army threatening Jerusalem. 185,000 soldiers died one night because the angel of the Lord, one angel, went through that army. It's a kingdom of love that you're being invited into. It's not the kingdom of performance. Can you imagine living with an angry performance God for all eternity? I can't imagine that, can you? The one who said, oh, I saw that. I saw you mess up again. That's it for you. You know, he's not like that. He's full of loving kindness and tender mercy. There's an invasion going on. <clears throat> now, he gives his authority and power to you. Let's look at John 14, verse 12. Jesus is speaking, most assuredly, I say to you, point to someone, touch them, point them on the shoulder, the back, and say, you. He's speaking to you. He who believes in me. If you're a believer, raise your hand. Believers, wave at me. The works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. What's that mean? I'm going to the Father, and we're sending the Holy Spirit to you. And the Holy Spirit is going to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. The one who clothed you with his power and his glory, the one who has immersed you in his power and his presence. And all you have to do is let that out and act in simple faith. And I love stories about children praying for the sick and seeing miracles happen because they just believed like, in childlike ways. But I want you to put your faith in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the one who's bringing the kingdom. Now, a little word about power and authority here. In uh, Luke chapter 7 is one of the stories of the centurion who uh, had a servant dying. He's a Roman officer, and he sends word to Jesus to come and heal his servant. It's an interesting story. The centurion had authority to arrest Jesus, or at least go get him. Send a squad of soldiers. Bring that Jesus guy in here and 
If he can do anything, let him pray for my friend. But he somehow knew that that's not how it works. He had been watching this thing. He'd, he'd seen how Jesus works, and he'd seen that he moves under authority. And so when Jesus comes, as he's approaching the house, he runs out and says, no, no, I'm not worthy that you should come into my house, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I understand how authority works. I am a man under authority, say under, and I have soldiers under me. And so I say to this guy, come, and he comes, and you go, and he goes, another one, do this, and he does it. I understand how authority works. You need to be under authority before you are given authority. All right? Jesus, when he heard that, he marveled and he said, I have not found such great faith anywhere in Israel. Of all the Jewish people who know the law and know about Moses and know about everything else, this Gentile centurion has got more faith than anyone I've met. That's quite a statement, isn't it? Now, what was it the guy said that was such great faith? He said, I understand how authority works, so give the order and my servant will be healed. And Jesus gave the order and his servant was healed. Now, here's something that will multiply your healing ministry. Did you hear what I said? This, this truth, if you grasp it, it will double your effectiveness in healing ministry. The power of the Holy Spirit is released by authority. Do you remember Luke 9, 1? Jesus called the 12 to himself and he gave them two things. What were they? Power and authority. Dunamis and exousia in Greek. Two very different things. He gave them the authority to release the power. They had submitted themselves to the leadership of Jesus Christ. He had submitted himself to the leadership of God the Father. So there was a chain of authority and a chain of command coming down. And Jesus had authority to give them authority. And so they went out and prayed for the sick, and miracles happened. And they came back all excited. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. Yes, miracles happened. And it works the same today. And this is where a lot of us kind of wither because, you see, we start looking to ourselves instead of to the Holy Spirit who is within you and has brought the kingdom within you. I want you to say to yourself, the kingdom of God is within me. That means the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are within you. You are one with the Trinity. You are in total agreement with the agenda of the kingdom to invade planet Earth and bring righteousness and peace and truth. And you're submitting yourself to the clear teaching of of the word of God here. You're submitting yourself to the Father's will. And so now, because you're under authority, he is giving you authority. Now, you have to pick up that authority and use it. I remember a few years ago, I was at the back under the mezzanine praying for people, and we had everybody in prayer lines, you know, and I was just going along probably with Carol and going, fill him, bless him, heal him, fill him, fill him, fill him, fill him. Those kind of prayers. And people were just going out in the spirit all around. And a guy came up to me afterwards and he says, can I speak to you? He said, I'm really, really uncomfortable with the way that you're praying. And I said, oh, really? Why is that? He said, because you, a mere man, are telling the Holy Spirit what to do. Who do you think you are? Well, it shook me, you know. I mean, we, every now and then you get people that say things and you just have to blow it off and say, hey, well, if that's what you think, God bless you. Go away, you know. But, <laughs> but this, 
shook me up, you know, because, see, I'm, I'm saying, oh, God, I don't, I don't want to step into presumption. I don't want to be doing my thing or, or just being, you know, I, I, I want to be under the authority of heaven. I, I want to do this your way. Help me with this, Lord. And the Lord began to show me. And the first thing he said to me was, and this took a, a few weeks to really work through. But the first thing he said was, how did Jesus pray? And I began to study the prayers of Jesus. And you know what? When he was ministering, how he prayed? Always the prayer of command. Be healed. See. Get up and walk. Be made whole. Be set free. Be cleansed. And I realized that Jesus only ever prayed the prayer of command when he was ministering. It's one time in the garden where he, where he was praying, not my will but thine be done, nevertheless, you know. But when he was ministering, it was always the prayer of command. And I thought, well, of course, that's Jesus, isn't it? And the Lord took me further. Philippians chapter 2. Jesus was totally God, God the Son, for all of eternity. But when he came to earth, it was as though he left his divinity to one side. He took his divinity off and made himself as a man. And so Jesus only ever ministered as a man filled with the Holy Spirit. So he never ministered out of his own divinity. Never. Not even one time. He always ministered out of his humanity. Do we agree on that? And many theologians in their desire to defend his divinity have done so at the expense of his humanity. He was perfect God but perfect man and only ever ministered out of his humanity which is why he's such an example now for us, you see. Because if he ministered out of his divinity, well, you know, he can do anything and you can't do it. But according to John 14, 12, the works he did, you can do. Because he's ministering as a man filled with the Holy Spirit, you and I can minister as a person filled with the Holy Spirit. So he's ministering out of his humanity. And yet he's always praying the prayer of command. So what is that? then the kingdom of heaven that is within him is being orchestrated because of love. There's total agreement. He only ever did what he saw the Father doing. He only ever spoke what he heard the Father speaking. And as he's prompted within to pray for this one, he lets heaven pray through him, prayers of command, and things move. And the final piece for me was reading about Smith Wigglesworth and Wigglesworth, how many like Wigglesworth? No, this gruff old guy. And he was asked a question one day. Mr. Wigglesworth, how is it that everywhere you go, miracles happen and the Holy Spirit moves? And he said, well, if the Holy Spirit doesn't move, then I move the Holy Spirit. When I read that, it just shocked me. I mean, like, what? Oh, careful here, careful here, you know. And the Lord began to speak, no, no, just, just think about this a minute. He has delegated his power and his authority to you. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Just as Jesus would wash your feet, so the Holy Spirit has come to be your helper. Think of that. Holy Spirit, will you help me with this? Will you help me with that? He's like, sure. It's like, honey, will you help me with the dishes? Sure. You know. It's like Ed emptying the dishwasher every morning, right? Carol gets me to do little things all the time, and, and I do it. I mean, I bring her coffee. and Right, Steve? She does it, of course, more than I do it to her. But, but that's what helpers do. 
the, the, the greater takes delight in serving the lesser because there's a relationship there of love. Will you tell the person sitting next to you, the Holy Spirit really loves you? And he'd love to bring you a coffee. And he would love to bring the kingdom to somebody through you. He would love to do that. And so here we have now the, this awesome, I mean, Ed talking about paradox. And here's the paradox that God, the Holy Spirit, would, would surrender himself in a, in a relationship of love and trust to you who is going to pray the prayer of command. So you're going to say to someone, rise and be healed, and his power is released through you as you use the authority that has been delegated to you. Once again, if you're under authority, then and only then can you be given authority. How many have willingly placed themselves under the authority of God's word? You're teachable, you're correctable, you're humble, teachable in spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants to use you. Put your hand up so heaven will see. He's taking attendance right now. I am under authority of heaven. I only want to do the things that help people and that bless people. Okay, then you now become the one who prays the prayer of command. Now here's the final piece, Matthew 6. How are we doing? Oh, the night is young. In Luke's gospel, the Lord's Prayer is, uh, in response to the question of the disciples, Lord, teach us to pray. And he says in Matthew 6, verse 9, in this manner, therefore, pray and this was so moving to listen to Ed and Janet saying every morning they, they go through the Lord's Prayer. And uh, gosh, I haven't done that in a while. So this morning I just got on my knees. I went through the Lord's Prayer. I didn't even get the first two lines out hardly. And start speaking to me just life and blessing. It was amazing. But here it is, you know, the prayer. How many learned it in school? Too bad about the rest of you. You're just too young, right? We used to rattle it off, kind of, you know. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, the will be done on earth. Amen. It was kind of a prayer. But no, that's, that's not how you say it. When you look at this prayer in the Greek language, in Matthew's gospel, the entire prayer is in the aorist imperative tense. What does that mean? The imperative tense is the tense of command and the aorist is the tense of final action. In Luke's gospel, the entire prayer is in the uh, imperfect tense, the uh, command but in the imperfect tense. The imperative imperfect. What does that mean? Here's how you would read it. Our Father in heaven. Oh, I'm acknowledging my relationship with you. You're the Father and I'm the Son. And, and I'm under your authority, oh Father. Oh Daddy God, it is such a pleasure to submit myself unto you. I want your agenda on earth, kingdom of God. I want that to come. Now here it is. Here's where the imperative kicks in. Jesus is teaching them how to pray and he's saying pray like this. Kingdom of God, come. Will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Can you see you have to exercise your authority to pray it that way? Luke's gospel is saying it this way. Kingdom of heaven, come and keep on coming. Will of God be done and keep on being done on earth as it is in heaven. And the whole prayer is in the imperative tense. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When you begin to rise up in the authority that has been delegated to you by Jesus Christ, the authority that has been delegated to you by God the Holy Spirit coming and clothing you with his anointing and filling you within and without with his power and bringing the kingdom to the very depths of your being. I tell you what, you become a kingdom person. You become a supernatural being in the heavenly realm, a child of God. And when you begin to pray, I tell you what, hell moves out of the way. Can you take a hold of this? Let's stand. See if you can find somebody left that's still got pain. If you got pain in your body, raise your hand. If you got sickness in your body, if you need gold teeth, raise your hand. If you need your neck adjusted, if you need sore feet healed, if you need whatever it is, just blood conditions, heart conditions, lung conditions, allergies, asthma. Turn around to one another. Find someone who's got their hand raised. If you both got your hand up, take turns on each other. That's okay. Get ready to pray and minister to one another. Now listen, we want to release this all over the earth because this is the kingdom. The embracing of the kingdom of God, of the Holy Spirit, your friend, wants to bring the kingdom when you pray and release him. Ask the person what's wrong, what they would like prayer for. <clears throat> Ask them to forgive anyone who has sinned against them or hurt them so that they're in grace and not law. They're in mercy and not justice. Step into mercy. Step into grace. Now pray the prayer. I take authority in the name of Jesus over the condition in your body. And I say to that pain, that tumor, that cancer, that devil, that habit, those lies of the heart, come out of them, loose them, and let them go. I call the fire of God down upon you and that sickness. I tell every demonic spirit, every spirit of witchcraft in this room, loose and go in the name of Jesus. Because we are one with the Savior. And the kingdom of God is invading planet Earth right now. The kingdom of God is here. Kingdom of God, come. Will of God be done in my friend, just as it is in heaven. And I know that there is no sickness in heaven.
Bring your power, Lord. Bring your wonderful anointing, Father. Now get them to check themselves. Begin to move and twist and turn and check it, push it, pull it, stretch it, shake it. Do whatever you need to do. And trade places now. Make sure that the one praying also gets prayer. <clears throat> Pray for one another in the name of Jesus. Mm. Right, if you feel like, just give me your attention a second. If you feel like something has shifted, something has changed, something is doing better in your body, take a minute, hold your hand up and wave your hand at me right here. If God has just done a miracle in you through the prayer of your friend, quickly run up to the front and let us hear about it. Come on. Quickly, 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 come. Quickly, come. Oh, Jesus, we love your kingdom. It is a kingdom of love and joy and peace. A kingdom of power. Come on, dear, come on. Just come to one of the stairs on either side and come up on the platform. What's God just done for you? I'm getting gold teeth. Gold teeth. Down here and up here. Is that what they prayed for? Uh-huh. Let's see. Oh, yeah, you are all right. They're changing, aren't they? All the blackness is leaving. Thanks, Holy Spirit. Fill her teeth with your, with your glory. What's happened to you? I had a really infected toe, and it's really getting better. I couldn't hardly walk on it all week. Fire on that toe right there. And I, also got a fill I also got a filling in my back tooth. A, a, a filling. Jump up and down on that toe. You couldn't do that before. I could barely walk. Barely I, I could barely walk. Thanks, Lord God. What happened to you? Every time I go to a conference, I get a sore throat, and this was no exception. And started today, I was looking for cough drops over there. They ran out, asked them to pray for my throat. The pain's gone. Pain is gone from your throat, just like that. Lord, thanks for the throat. Throw the teeth in for good measure. There's no, there's no bad teeth in heaven. Did you know that? There's no bad teeth in heaven, and heaven comes to you. What happened to you? I had a lady that's standing behind me pray for me for my knee. I've been having problems with it for about a year, and I had an appointment to go see an orthopedic surgeon next month. And even as I was laying on the floor a couple nights ago, the first night I was here, I couldn't even lay on the floor because my knee was in so much pain. And when she lay her hands on me, the pain is gone. Bend it for me. Look at that. Did it just leave instantly when they prayed back there? Prayed twice. What did they say? Be healed. They prayed the prayer of command. And the Holy Spirit just went and did it just like that. Don't you love it? I love it, Lord. I love it. What happened here? They're telling me that, that I'm getting gold teeth, that it's in process in the upper. There's something going on there, that's for sure. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, what's happened, Andrew? Um, my vision got a step better. I, it was messed up four years ago from a brain injury, and it's been really blurry, and it's been getting better. And Father, I lift the shock and the trauma of that brain injury off off this young man all of it goes and his vision comes absolutely normal in the name of Jesus Christ your son check it one more time look around what do you think uh, not not perfectly better yet but uh, like a little bit better again keep taking it right here keep taking it what's happened to you 
my jaw, I, I, I bit something this morning. My jaw went out of place. The, the socket w seemed to be out of place. I uh, had a hard time all day opening my mouth. Uh, and uh, this lady back there prayed with me and my wife, and she put her hand on my jaw. She prayed, and now my jaw is 100%. 100%, just like that. Some lady you didn't know. Isn't that great? <laughs> Father, thanks for that. What happened to you? Um, I've had arthritic pain in my elbow for quite a while, this one. Yeah. And my friend prayed for it, and the pain's gone. It's been really bad this week. Move it for me. Your friends prayed, and the pain left. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, you guys can go down. Let me hear from a couple of these people. And you folks come over this way for a moment. You know, as, as this happens, faith increases in the room. I want you to do it one more time. Pray for that person one more time. Though the one who said, well, I don't feel any change or whatever. Have another go. Let the kingdom of God have another run at that thing. Nothing stops the Holy Spirit. Nothing. What happened here? I have arthritis and um, plantar fasciitis in my feet, and I absolutely have no pain. There was just a heat that went through me, and the Lord has just healed me. Praise you, Lord. A heat went through them. Jump up and down on those feet. Could you not do that before without pain? Isn't it wonderful? Jesus, thank you. What happened to you? I have Team J, and I'm a worship leader, and when we start singing, during worship, it just started hurting again, my jaw and my head, and I deal with that all the time. I just sing through it, but they start praying for me, and it's gone. The headache's gone, and my jaw doesn't hurt anymore, so. Wow. What happened to you? My shoulder. I've been dealing with it for a long time, and a gal I came with, she's like, oh, we're going to have to work on that. And Deborah back there prayed with me, and it went away a little bit, and then I felt the heat go through it, and I had a clicking noise that I couldn't get rid of, and the clicking's gone, and... Yes, God. And you just released, totally. Swing that arm for me. Now, if it ever tries to come back, do you know what to do? Just step back into the kingdom. That presence of the Holy Spirit, the rule and reign of God. Thank you, Father. What happened here? I had fell on my tailbone twice. Yeah. And I was in a lot of pain in my back. Yeah. And I just got prayer and it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Does that feel good? It's gone. Just like that when your friends prayed. Jesus, you're amazing. So amazing. So amazing. We'll take a few more. Check yourselves again out there. Move it, twist it. Come on. Check it. And if you feel like, you know, I'm free. Someone's shoulder was just healed over here. A shoulder healing that you could not move very well. God's just touched that shoulder. Just take that healing over there right now in the name of Jesus. And the several of you with lung conditions and emphysema and asthma, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I command that generational spirit to come out of you and loose you and let you go. Now just start to breathe. Someone's asthma was just healed in this center section here. Take a deep breath and you'll find you can breathe all the way down. Where is that person? Just check your lungs right there. Breathe it in. If that's you, give me a wave. Thank you, Lord. Is it here? Thank you, Jesus. Just keep taking it. Keep taking it. Two or three more. What happened? I had pain in my neck, and it's gone now, and I feel taller and straighter now after they prayed. Taller. What happened? I had pain since I was born in my neck. Three years ago, when I went to the Father's Love Me, Love You Conference, they prayed for me. I was in agony up and down my back. And I, I got better, but it never went away. And it's gone. It's gone. Totally gone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. What happened to you, sir? I have tendonitis in my right arm. I was supposed to be wearing a cast, and I took it off because I got tired of people asking me what was wrong and trying to pray for me. Nothing happened. And my wife prayed for me, just prayed, and now all the pain's gone. I couldn't even hold a cup of coffee before, and now it's all gone. Wow. Couldn't hold a cup of coffee. 
thanks, Master. I had pain in my left knee, and it's all gone. Just like that. And what happened to you? Um, Thursday morning, Carol and one of the prayer team members prayed for me, and God healed my neck that had been broken in a car wreck 32 years ago. And then he healed my pelvis that had been uh, deformed when I was born. I'd never been able to do sit-ups or lie on the floor on my back. Pain's gone. And then with that, I'd had a degenerative bone disease in my heel. I haven't been able to put my foot flat for three months, and I'm... Now you're fine. Put it down. Stamp down on it. Isn't that amazing? It's a, it's a miracle. Thanks, Holy Spirit. You know, I feel like we ought to do one more thing before we worship and transition into the fire tunnels. Some time ago at Bill Johnson's church, they got on the cell phones and they phoned sick people and prayed for their friends over the phone. And last year, about this time, when Todd Bentley was here, we did the same thing. Get your cell phone out and phone a sick friend. Come on. How many have a cell phone here ready to go? Wave at me. Wave at me. Get it out and phone your friend and say, I want to pray for you. Pray the prayer of command over the phone to them, wherever they are in the world. I mean, you can phone Europe if you want to. You can phone home if you want to. But just get on the phone and call them right now and pray for them in Jesus' wonderful name over the phone. Pray that prayer of command. Get them to forgive everybody that's, you know, hurt them or owed them and whatever. And move into grace and believe God for a miracle for that person. Go on. Dial your friend's number. If God has just healed you of something, come on down. We want to hear from you quickly. Come. Who else has had a miracle? Wave your hand at me. People are jumping and excited all over the place. Come and tell me about it. Come on. Quickly, 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 come. Come on, use these stairs on the side. It's easier for you. What's happened to you? Uh, actually, in 1994, um, I was in a car accident, and we were on our way to the service here. Yeah. And I got neck injury. In, the, in between my uh, shoulder blades and I've had trouble ever since and uh, it's so much better now there's a little bit left but it's so much better. thanks Jesus for that what happened to you I'm healed of allergies and asthma and I just took the deepest breath that I've ever taken before so take a deep breath for me isn't that amazing where were you sitting? Mid right there in the middle. Right down there. Right yeah, by, see, by the people standing up screaming who know how much of a torment it's been in my life. <laughs> I can't go anywhere without cats and dogs and... Yeah. <laughs> if it ever tries to come back, do you know what to do? I'm not saying it will, I'm just saying. Don't fight the devil. Just step back into the love of Jesus and say, Kingdom of God, come will of God be done in my life. I'm not having that anymore. Wouldn't that be wonderful? No more asthma. Imagine when you wake up in the morning and take that deep breath and go, I'm still healed. Thanks, Father. What happened to you? Um, well, he healed. I had a bone on my foot that was growing the wrong way, and I was supposed to have surgery, and I forgot about it. I've been praying about my hair because I have alopecia, but I don't anymore, I don't think, but it can't be tested. But they prayed. It just dawned on me that my foot. And so my friends prayed, and it's, it was like a marble, and now it's smooth and not there. It's gone. And you're amazed, aren't you? <laughs> Surgery. It's like... Thanks, Holy Spirit. What's happened to you, my dear? I'm hearing in stereo for the first time. Hearing in stereo for the first time. And it happened during the worship, didn't it? It sure did. Do you hear that, Kelly? During the worship, her ear popped open. For the glory of God. Father, thanks. Oh, thanks. And whatever else is wrong, just strengthen that body and heal her in Jesus' wonderful name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If 
If someone on the cell phone gets healed, run up here and tell us about it. What's happened to you? I've had cold sores on my lips for more than uh, 10 years, a lot of pain, and uh, it just hasn't gone away. Doctors have given all kinds of medicine, nothing, but tonight the, the pain's gone. Just need new skin now. The pain is gone, and the new skin is coming. More than 10 years I've had pain on my lips, and just split lips and cut lips, and uh, today the pain's gone. Just tonight, the family, Steve was playing this afternoon, and then another family was praying for me just before, and the fire of God has come all over my lips. It's all gone. Father, thanks for this. Kingdom of God comes to him. What happened to you? Um, I had an MRI, and I had two bulging discs, and they saw arthritis all along the lower um, part of my back. And um, I had the people around me, they were praying, and I, I kept bending back, and it kept snapping and cracking, and they just kept praying and praying, and the heat just started to radiate through my hips, and the pain is gone. <laughs> Do you know what that heat is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit bringing heaven to earth, right into your spine. Yes. How can you help but love this? I know. And I, I did ask for my tooth. I haven't seen that yet. I keep waiting all these gold teeth. I've had an abscess tooth for a year, 13 months. And I'm supposed to have Jesus, the yes. abscess goes. We call that tooth into divine order right now because there's no abscess teeth in heaven. As you did with the spine, so do with this mouth in Jesus' name. Let it come. What happened here? I just phoned my mother that uh, uh, a week or so ago, she just came out of the hospital a couple of weeks of, with depression and just um, a stress-related thing, and she's just down and terrible. And I phoned and I prayed with her, and I says, how do you feel right now? I never gave her a chance to talk about the news or anything, the weather or nothing, and she says, I feel great. Just like that, the kingdom of God coming over the phone. Thank you, Father. Bless him and bless his mother. What happened here? Um, I've had aching muscles for years, a long time, particularly from my waist down. Waist down. Years you've had aching muscles. And it's getting slowly worse, but a friend just prayed for me as a second thought today after another prayer you told her to pray, and I just felt all warm all over, and then just a few minutes ago there was just one pain left in my ankle, and another lady prayed for me, and it's all gone. I'm completely pain -free. Just bend that leg that was so, so bad. It was all sore. It was, just it was all sore. No problem. Are you amazed? prayer here all the time and nothing ever happens <laughs> tonight was your night thank you Jesus what's happened to you I can't hear out of my left ear and my friend's been sitting on my left all night so every time she talks to me I'm turning to hear what she's saying so they started praying for me and they said did anything change and I go I don't I don't I don't think so but my mom was holding my right ear so I was hear what she was saying to me on my left ear Yes. Say Jesus. Jesus. You're hearing out of that left ear, aren't you? Thank you, Father. What's happening? Uh, my friend Jake, who moved into our home recently, um, he has had pain for the last two months around his kidneys, and he's been to the hospitals, he's been to doctors, they've done all sorts of tests, they can't figure out what was the matter. We just prayed, a uh, prayer of command, and he has no pain. Who, is he still on the phone? What's his name? Jake. Jake, are you there, Jake? What's just happened to you? <laughs> yeah. What's just happened to you, tell me. Is there any pain in those kidneys? I think he said no. <laughs> Give Jesus a big hand for that. Oh, Father. Right now, he feels totally numb, his whole body right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
he went completely numb in his whole body. That's power on him here. Throw her in for good measure, Holy Spirit. What's happened with you? A uh, couple weeks ago, I hurt my shoulder just working out, and I had pain in my left shoulder. My wife and daughter started praying for me, and the pain got less and less, and uh, they prayed again and again, and the pain's gone. Move it for me. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do this. You could not do that. Wow. Well, look at all these people here. God is so good. What's happened to you, young man? I asked the people in my section to, to uh, pray for my lower back and my eyesight, which has just been an ongoing issue for me. And, and, um, and so they did. And I had probably uh, 10 people around me. And, and uh, the back pain was about 90% gone. And one of my brothers said, Hey, go up and faith the back pain in faith, and and just uh, and and uh, testify about that, and then uh, and then just pray for the vision and and let God do what He wants to in the rest. So I'm here in faith. So the most of it's gone, maybe 10 percent left. Well, the, the back the back pain was is totally gone now. The rest of the 10 percent God did on the stage, and um, the uh, the eyesight. I just I just uh, Father, straighten these eyes and heal his vision. Kingdom of God, come. Will of God be done in these eyes. Because there's no bad eyes in heaven. Oh, Jesus, I worship you. I worship you, I worship you. Just look over there and see if there's any change. Well, we're getting overwhelmed with all this, aren't we, Carol? We are, we are. Give Jesus a great big shout of praise tonight. What have you got here, Steve? A broken toe was just healed with this lady. A broken toe just healed. And it's fine. Gloire à Dieu. Thank God. I said... Gloire à Dieu. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Fill her up right here. All right, I'm going to ask Steve to come and uh, can we have all of our ministry team go and take positions in the fire tunnels here? We're going to do two on this side, four at the back, I believe. Six at the back. Okay, now everyone who's not on the prayer ministry team, stay in, in your chair. Stay in your chair. Those of you underneath the flags, could you stack your chairs? And if there's people at the back, could you stack the chairs and move them off to the side? Soaking School Ministry Team, wave your hands. You folks are going to the back in the first two sections, the section by the Resource Center and the section in the middle. You're going to do four tunnels, two in that side, two in that side. So if you can quickly go back and organize yourself. School of Ministry students, where are you? Good? No, I'm going to have you guys head back into this section over here, and the school ministry students are going to get you to do three tunnels in the overflow area, in the overflow. So all school of ministry students, back to the back, uh, the right-hand section there, you're going to do three tunnels back there. So if you can organize yourselves, prayer ministry team from TACF and the visiting prayer team, you're going to head over to the flags. We're not going to do any at the front. So TACF team... Underneath the flags, big long. Great, look how quickly you stacked all the chairs. Now folks, here's what we're gonna be doing. Instead of the prayer team coming to you, you're gonna go to the prayer team. So don't move yet just because we just need to get it organized, but TACF team, you go underneath the flags. And what we're gonna be having is prayer ministry team are gonna be facing each other with about three, four feet apart and about 10 long in each line. And you just get to go walk slowly down the line, and they're going to be speaking blessing over you and impartation and more anointing and more authority and more fire and all that kind of stuff. So we call it a fire tunnel because it does get hot. And you just need to go through, and once you've gone through one, find another tunnel, find another tunnel, find another tunnel. So at the back again, we're going to be having uh, soaking school people. You're going to be getting into... 
Uh, let's see, how many tunnels are you doing? You're going to be doing four school ministry students. You're doing three. So just organize yourself real quick. Make sure there's a clear distinction where you're going. And you need to decide which way are people coming in and which way are people going out. Uh, at the, where's the TACF team over here? Where are you going to start? You're going to have people go this way or come that way? Go this way? Okay. So those of you under the flags, the, the prayer team is going to go that way and spill out that way. And at the back, there's a whole bunch of areas ready to go. So if you'd like prayer, head to the back or head over here. This has got a big group waiting already. Remember, there's eight teams at the back. Most of the prayer is at the back. So head to the back. I'd say go to the back. There's only one, there's only one um, underneath the flags. And while you're waiting to go through, you just worship the Lord. Kelly and the band are going to be playing. So you can sing along, worship the Lord. If you've never experienced the fire tunnel, friends, you gotta, you got to do it. So again, most of the tunnels are at the back. So join the back lineup. If you wait at the front, you're going to be here much longer than if you head to the back because there's, there's eight tunnels at the back, only one at the front. Yeah, those of you that volunteered to be a dragger, go to the end of one of the fire tunnels and just say, do you have draggers yet? We need about two draggers per tunnel. So those of you that volunteered to be a dragger, find one of the tunnels, go to the end of the tunnel and say, do, do you have draggers yet? And for those that don't make it through, we drag you out and lay you down so you can get more of the Holy Spirit. Good. Miss Kelly, are you ready? We're going to have some fire tunnel music. So you just enjoy yourself. Make sure you go through three or four fire tunnels. Take an hour if you want. We're going to have a great evening together. These fire tunnels are great places of impartation. Many people underestimate what's going to happen. They think, well, that was nice. I had 10 people pray for me real quick. Nothing happened. Wrong. People get healed. Deliverance takes place. All sorts of amazing things take place during the fire tunnels. <laughs> Let me just say, for those of you that are Coming back tomorrow morning, our morning meeting here is at 10.30, and the doors open around 9 o'clock, I think it is, and uh, so you're welcome to join us if you're not heading back to your own church. If you're in the Toronto area, you have your own church, make sure you go there tomorrow. If you live in the Ajax Pickering area, we have a congregation that meets at the Ajax Community Center at 10 a.m. If you're a young adult, we have a young adult church downtown Toronto, 6 at night at the YMCA on Young and Grosner. So we have four different congregations that will make up TACF on a Sunday, and uh, two in the morning and two at night.
Your key.